Hello, welcome back. In this segment, I'm going to show you how we can use jump to ESP to trick ASLR and bypass it. However, we have no direct instruction that maps to jump star percentage ESP. In this case, we will somehow find that instruction inside the binary. And I will show you a trick uh, for this particular example. You may be able to generalize the trick for other examples. OK. So here is your user input, right? argv1 uh, is passed here. Assume argv1 exists. Otherwise, you get a null pointer dereferencing error which is not a safe thing to do. So you need to check whether R count is at least two or even more strict equal to two uh, before even you run it. Anyway, assume argv1 exists. For the sake of brevity, I didn't add the error handling code. And you're copying the argv1 into the buffer. Okay, I am assuming the buffer is of size 80. And there is a local variable 58623 is the value. So I already compiled it with some special flags. I have disabled the stack protector and make the uh, stack executable just for the demo purpose. The assembly code from the C code uh, can be summarized as follows. I will quickly draw the stack layout in this case based on my assembly code, right? So 80 bytes of buffer, I have 80 bytes of buffer, and then four bytes of uh, the local variable. Okay, this is another four bytes local variable. And then oh, in, that, in that four bytes, right, you will be filling in 58623 here. And above is your EBB. That's basically the caller's EBB. And then the return address. So the idea of this return to jumpstar ESP is already discussed in demo one. So we will be putting a shell code over here, right? This is where we will put the shell code. Okay. And that will be activated by replacing the return address by jump star ESP instruction. But the question is, where is jump star ESP in the, in the assembly? Okay, let us look at that first very quickly. If you load this into GDB, right, and disassemble the main, you'll be able to draw the stack layout based on the disassembly. But where is jump star ESP? It turned out that jump star ESP is hiding here internally uh, within this instruction. Okay, why I say that? If you look at the machine code at this instruction, right? Let's look at some eight words, eight bytes. Okay, it doesn't really matter, eight or seven. Let's just look at this. You can see there is FF and then E4. Okay, FF E4 is basically the reverse of this constant and FF E4 corresponds to jump star ESP instruction. Okay, that's basically the idea. So you would know uh, FF address, you starting with 8048411, right? This is 11, this is 12, this is 13, and this is 14. So all you have to do is replace this one by four, right? So you essentially copy this whole thing and uh, go to your Perl script. Let's see, they call it exploit, jmp2.perl script. And uh, you can see here the return address is essentially this address where the jump star ESP instruction is. As part of the constant, we have the numbers FFE4, and the rest is simple, similar to demo one. Um, we need to have 88 knobs because of the local variable taking four bytes, 80 bytes for buffer, four bytes for the local variable, and then EBB, so totally 88, and then the return address, which is the address of the jump star ESP instruction, which is hiding inside the the local variable, when we interpret the, the variable as code, uh, yeah, we are able to jump for x86, that's not a problem. Okay, let, then the rest is the same as demo one. Padding, return address, shell code, and then you write it to a file, and then you should be able to execute it. Okay, so all you have to do is now, I'll show you a simple demo from command line, right? Victim, JSP, jump to ESP2, and then cat the payload, payload, JMP, ESP. Okay, now you have a shell. I can exit command, I can exit. So shell code is now running successfully and you, you were able to activate the shell code. We can even perform hex dump to look at the payload. All right, payload, jump, uh, ESP. And you can see I filled in 88 
uh, knobs and then my four bytes of return address which is replaced by the address of jumpstar esp instruction which is hiding inside the the code uh, somewhere in the constant actually we leverage the constant as as code and then our shell code okay so that is essentially what's happening and we can load it in the gdb as we need to quickly check this victim jmp to jmp esp2 disassemble the main Put a breakpoint after the string copy, right? And paste it here and run it from cat uh, payload jmp esp. And we can now look at, let's say, two words starting from ebb. You should see ebb is replaced by null, and the return address is the address of the instruction. Let's see what is there here, right? Let's uh, look at the instruction at this address. And you can see it's nothing but jump star percentage ESP. That means we can even put a breakpoint at this address and continue. We will hit there. We can even check what is there in ESP. ESP is pointing to this address, which contains our shell code. OK, we can look at all the 24 bytes, convince ourselves. The ESP is actually pointing the shell code, yeah. CD8 is the ending to call the Linux interrupt, and the rest is the shell code we put it in our Perl script. Okay, so you have seen that the shell code will be activated if I just put a breakpoint here, paste, continue. It's hitting there. I can just show you five instructions. You can press continue, and that's it. Yeah, it's already spawning a new process. I think some of the, the the breakpoints I made have created some errors, but overall you can see here, I was able to spawn a shell within the GDB as well. You can see bin dash is executing a new program. Okay, let us exit and let's load it into GDB. Let's run it, cat, payload, JMP, ESP. Yeah, you can see now no error message, nothing. A new process is spawned. I can run commands and execute it. Of course, when you run something within GDB, usually the privilege doesn't really matter. It's dropped right away. You don't need escalate privilege within GDB, but I was just showing you the demo of how the return address is changed and how the control is transferred to the shell code. Okay, to summarize, what have you done today? We looked at this piece of code. We interpreted this number as a code. Some portion of this number becomes code. That code is jump star percentage ESP and the rest is the same as demo one. All right, that's all. Thank you very much for your attention.